behalf of the family, I'd like to thank each of you for being here. I know that there's many friends and relatives here, church members have known Lee for many, many years. And this will be an opportunity to re relive some of the memories through sharing of stories and praising God for what he has done through Lee as well as Lyle working together. I'd like to invite our three individuals who are going to be sharing a scripture and also Judy to come up who will be sharing the prayer. So I'd like to invite them to come up and then right after that we'll have our first song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. She loved music and we're wanting to celebrate that through having three different songs to sing together. They asked me to choose some of Lee's favorite scriptures, and it was hard. It was very hard because her Bible was her favorite. And whatever the situation was, she had a favorite verse for it. But these three that I chose were some that she went to quite often in the last few months that I was with her. And I'm going to read uh, Proverbs um, Three, five, and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. This is one that she went through quite often at the end to help sustain her through it. And I have Psalms 118, 14. And I chose it from the message. God's my strength. He's also my song. And now he's my salvation. And my text is Psalms 119, 105. And I'm sure you probably all know it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'd like to invite the Lord's presence as I'll start. Did I knock it off, Rick? I'm very so. Can you hear me? I apologize. I'd like us to bow our heads now for our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on this Sabbath afternoon with a heart full of gratitude for who you are and for the life of Lee and what her life has meant to each of us. For some of us, it's a memory that dates back to childhood in my case. How many years I remember Lee being in Sabbath school teaching children leading, encouraging. Oh Lord, we thank you for, I thank you for those wonderful memories and for the life that she lived, for the family that she raised. I continue to ask for continued blessings, blessings of love on the family that is remaining. Lord, you are coming. You're going to we have, we have a home prepared for us in heaven, and we're looking forward to that and to being reunited. So keep us, Lord, in your arms until that day. In Jesus' name, I humbly pray. Amen. The song was chosen by the family. What a friend we have for in Jesus, 499. Should be a book right ahead of you under the seat. <clears throat> oh. 
What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins increase to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often for. Thank you, Marlo, for leading out in that. I'd like to invite Beth up at this time to share our life sketch, and then immediately after that, we'll have the slideshow. Um, this life sketch was put together by Lee's daughters, Susan and Jerry, my mom. Um, and so I want to share a little about my grandmother, Lee. She was born Lenore Elaine Root, but anybody who knew her knew better than to call her by her legal name. She was born at home on September 2, 1931 in Walla Walla, Washington, and passed away on August 19, 2023 in her home in Moses Lake. I inherited my grandfather's leaky tear ducts. Um, she called this place home for the past 69 years. I don't know why they asked me to do this. <laughs> this is going to be rough, but we'll do it together. Um, Lee was raised in Walla Walla Valley and graduated from Walla Walla High School. During this time, she met Lyle, and they were married on July 12, 1950. They started their marriage in Milton Freewater, Oregon, and they also started their family there. Um, it was during this time that Lee accepted and was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They then moved to Moses Lake in 1954 because that's where Lyle had found work, and they stayed and raised their family here. They both loved the Lord. 
And after joining this local Seventh-day Adventist church, both held a variety of church offices over the years. Lee especially enjoyed children and teaching the primary Sabbath school. She had a passion for those in need and served in the Dorcas Society and then community services when the name changed. Their work included home visitations to members that were not able to attend church. They made quilts and delivered meals to those who were in need of both food or comfort. Their community outreach work also included having clean clothing and a food pantry to help those who needed it. Lee's hobbies included reading, studying the Bible, camping with her family, traveling, sewing, doing crafts, and pottery. Gardening got missed on here. She was my go-to gardening guru. Growing up, she never learned how to swim, so she was very passionate that her children would know how. As Lyle was very athletic and had a ski boat for many years, this allowed not only their children, but many of the cousins to enjoy time together on the lake. Lee wanted to make sure that her children could enjoy this time safely, and a commitment to water safety was certainly passed down, as all of Jerry's children were taught water safety as infants. As their family grew, both Lyle and Lee worked hard to ensure that their children were all able to have a Christian education and were involved in Pathfinders. Lee and Lyle were also leaders in Pathfinders for a time. In order to help with the expenses of Christian education, Lee started by cleaning the church and school with the help of her daughters and later was hired by the public school district as head cook for Frontier Junior High School and worked there until her she retired. After her retirement from the school district, she worked for Little Friend Daycare. Lee always enjoyed the kids she worked with, whether they were in her primary class, students at the junior high, or daycare children. She took special interest in them and prayed for them often. Lyle and Lee loved the Lord and trusted God to protect and provide for them in their retirement. They both loved to help anybody who needed help, and they also helped in supporting the new church building program in addition to their other donations. They were certainly well known and respected in this community. So <laughs>
That was very nice. Nice music going along with beautiful pictures of the family and through the years. This time, we've got some roaming mics we're going to be providing for people to share. We'd like to invite family members, if you have some things you'd like to share, I'd like to invite you to begin. And I realized I failed to do one thing. I usually ask one person to, to start, and I failed to do that. Um, and so is there anyone that would like to share? Okay, uh, start, first starting with the family, but if not, we'll start with Sharon back there. Anyone else from the family want to share? Okay, we'll go back to Sharon. Back in the back there, she raised her hand. Raise your hand again, Sharon. Well, my name is Sharon Klimmel, and I have known Lee from the time I came to this church. And um, she was always friendly and loving and caring. And in her later years, when they, when she had extra money from the big tower they had in their yard, we, in our church family, began getting a little flower, a little flower vase. And it was signed from a fellow Adventist. And if you had surgery or if you were really sick, you got one of these flowers. And it was just a really great day brightener. And we didn't know who was doing it. And I questioned around. Nobody knew. Well, one day, Lee needed some help. And so she called me and she said, Sharon, I don't have a phone number and I don't have an address. And she explained what she had been doing and she made the florist vow to silence, not to tell a soul. And she said, I need a phone number or an address or they can't um, give these flowers out. They have to be sure someone's home. So... After that, I became her scout. I'd jump on my broom and away I'd go and find out this information. And um, I make um, lunches for homeless people. And Lee came to me and she said, Sharon, do you need any help with the lunches? I said, no, I, I have enough. Um, she said, well, I have some extra money. And it's not much, but... I was kind of thinking it'd be nice if the homeless people had some fresh fruit in their lunch. So ever after that, she slipped me some money and I'd buy fresh fruit for their lunches. She was a dear, sweet person. Very, I loved her very much. Thank you, Sharon. Hey, Louise. Oh, and now I know who sent me the flowers. Yes, the secret <laughs> is out. Yes. I'm Chris. Um, Aunt Lee, in my book, she was not stuffy and she was very practical. I loved her for that. Uh, she didn't fit the typical, I was raised a good Pharisee, so she didn't fit that. She had chicken. She didn't mind having this and that. And Uncle Lee was, Uncle Lyle was my favorite uncle. I'm sorry if the other people, he was my favorite uncle because he had cars and mechanics and helped us with our bicycles. And the whole family was nice. And so when I was, I grew up here about oh, 1963, four, five, something like that. And my favorite cousin was Jerry. <laughs> Just, we're about the same age. No, not that there's nothing wrong with Susan. I love her too. No, I love, love Leroy and John, but uh, she was my favorite at that time. But I loved Aunt Lee because she was so practical, so caring, and you could fit right into her family at any time. Uh, many times I've been through there, I got lunch and supper. I even spent the night there when I was driving truck, coming back from Canada. Just invited me right in. I, I liked Aunt Lee. Amen. Thank you, Chris. We've got one, one over here, Marlo in the front, and then uh, 
Faye in the back. Okay, go ahead, Faye, you can begin. I moved here in 1990, and uh, Lee was the first Brenda I met in Moses Lake. And right from the start, she made me feel like I'd been here forever. Uh, she included me in her Dorcas work and in her Sabbath school work. And often kicked me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Sometimes she had to drag pretty hard. <laughs> but she opened up a lot of new experiences for me. Things that I would never have done if she hadn't have been the kind of a person she was. And I say she pushed, but it was in a kind and loving and educational type way. It was never forced or never um, demanding, but she always managed to get me to move just a little bit out of my comfort zone so that I learned and experienced new things that I wouldn't have done before. She always made me feel welcome. She always made my family feel welcome when they moved up here. And I just cannot express the wonderful experience I had of being one of her best friends. Um, we had so many things in common, and we were so opposite in so many things. But it worked so well together, and I grew to love her like a sister. And... I don't know how I'm going to go on without her encouragement and her her care and her pushing me out of my comfort zone. I guess my comfort zone has got as big as it's going to get. But I'll be forever grateful and love her so very much for all the wonderful things that she has done for me and my family. Thank you, Faye. I'm Marlo Ring Ring. I've known the Buds since I was seven years old. We moved from Lowerwood, Oregon to Freewater, Freewater, Oregon, and at that time. And the 20 acres my folks rented with a little old house on it abutted to the back end of their property. That's how I happened to know them so many years. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about Lee until we moved here about 14 years ago, so I still can't tell you a whole lot about her, except what I've heard. I remember Lyle. He worked for the Ford Garage in Milton, Freewater. But he bought a brand new 47 Chevrolet. I couldn't figure that out. But I thought he was wise. We lived way back in a cherry orchard just off of Cobb Road out of Freewater. And every night he'd go home, you could hear those straight pipes on that Chevy going down the road. <laughs> just flying down the road. Lyle's always been a great guy to know, and I didn't haven't seen them since... Oh, probably back in the uh, 50s till we moved here in 99. So we had seen him for all those years. Okay, there's Bud. And then, okay, right here. I'm her sister-in-law, Cleo. And I, have, <clears throat> I was living in Milton Freewater, Oregon. Uh, I live in College Place now, but uh, when they were both living, uh, they loved gardening. They had a beautiful garden, and they loved sharing it. I had a garden, but I didn't grow squash, and they would come over every fall with a nice, big, beautiful squash to share with me. And <clears throat> then when my sister was teaching at the school over at Pasco, uh, she started taking them over to them too and and her sister uh, lived in Dixie, Washington and she would take things from her garden and drive over there to give to them. They loved sharing their garden and she loved working in the garden. She had a beautiful garden but one thing that was really special is she loved raising roses. I think that's why her daughter is seeing too. She has all these lovely flowers here today because her mother loved roses. She had a collection of roses. And I don't remember how many there was, but when she would come over, she'd tell me, oh, I found another rose bush, a different one that she didn't have. And she'd have that out there in her yard. 
well, that's a lot of work to keep those up, you know. And my sister, Angie, when she uh, had some time off, she went over there and she was by herself. And so she went over, she said, I want to go over there and work in those roses. They're so beautiful, but they need more attention. And she spent time weeding and helping her getting those uh, roses back in shape again so that we all could really enjoy that lovely rose collection. Thank you, Cleo. Bud had his hand up. Yeah, I'm Bud Morgan, and I'm I've known Lyle and Lee too. I knew who Lyle was, but um, then when they moved here in '54, uh, why we worked together and uh, uh, as deacons, and uh, we take turns teaching classes and some of that. But uh, Lyle was really a, a good mechanic, I guess. He will tell told about when he worked. To Steen Farms, I think that was south of uh, Milton Freewater. They, he he bought a tractor or something. He sent Lyle out to uh, see if he could do some work in the field. Uh, Lyle had never seen one just like that, but he's able to figure out that diesel, whether it was alcohol and uh, injection, you know, a lot of the, the old diesels, some of them run on gas or to start <clears throat> but anyway he got it going and he's really proud of that and then he said uh steen come by a little bit later and, and uh, he could hardly believe why was that working that tractor <laughs> uh, but uh, he was a little bit mischievous while at times and i had a ford pickup and uh, it wasn't that old and, and it just quit running one day and i was down there at gary's place and uh, I checked everything, uh, gas and everything I could think of, and they'd crank over, but it wouldn't wouldn't run. And so I I called Lyle, and he said, oh, "I'll I'll be over in a little while and see what I can do." <clears throat> so he he came over and uh, he opened the door, and I think he stuck his hand under the the dash and he said oh it'll run now i said well what did you do <laughs> he wouldn't tell me <laughs> and uh i said hey I, i'm gonna need to know i might have to get, uh, get it going i'm stuck out somewhere he's all oh, have a good day and he drove off <laughs> and uh a practical joke that... on you <laughs> how's that he apparently pulled a practical joke on you well he did and uh, he said his conscience would bother him a little bit a day or two later, and he called me back. He said, well, uh, that model pickup, it has a, a gas uh, shutoff. If it's in an accident, it shuts the fuel pump off. And he said, you just have to push a button in and reset it. <laughs> so anyway, he, he was out for fun sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, bud. I, I have a question. That blue Thunderbird, is that a 61? Who knows what year that Thunderbird was? 62. 62, okay. Anyone else want to share? Yes, Lawrence, and then Judy. Well, I came here in 1965. At, to teach at the school. And I know every Monday morning when I walked into the school, the way the light was, the floor just shone. And it wasn't until later that I found out that Lee was doing the janitor work. And since it was mentioned in the this earlier by Beth, I thought I would comment that it was beautiful. And I'm sure Jerry and Susan were with her probably. But it was very nice. I'm Judy Twig. Uh, I was born here, 1949. So I suppose that I knew Lee and the family from that point on when they moved here in 54. So I, 
because the earliest memories I have, of course, are of the kids and, you know, all of them being in school together. We were classmates. Um, Susan and Jerry, I think, were more my classmates, though I'm a year older. Um, or two, or two, right, because Jerry's the same age as my sister Cindy that's three years younger. So, yes, I am the older of the three, of the two girls. Right, we did Pathfinders together. Um, but just outstanding memories of walking into the old church, and and Lee would always, always be in a classroom, was it always just primary? I, what, I, I was thinking it was also kindergarten. Yes, some of you are agreeing with me. But always Sabbath school and always memory verses and always having little projects for the kids to save money for, for, some, for some mission project. That inspired me. Um, the thought of saving money. So when our kids were little, um, really little, I had a box that I found, a pretty box, and we started saving quarters in it. And then every 13th Sabbath, we would bring the quarters in an envelope to church. And I'm sure the deacons probably are tired of, of, of the envelope with, with all the quarters to count. Some years, some quarters, it's more than than others, by the way. But nevertheless, the role model of service is something that remains very clear to me. And the other thing that that filled my life with happiness was Lee's flowers. Um, always flowers, beautiful flowers that she would bring to church, bring for functions. Anytime we needed flowers, Lee was happy. And I remember, I don't know all the things that she gave me for flowers, for functions, but there were always flowers and beauty. And I can hardly wait to, to be in heaven with Lee and to, um, to once again be able to maybe be a neighbor. And she can give me tips on growing beautiful flowers. So God bless all of you, family. And may we all continue to be a life of service and love like, like Lee was. I did visit her um, probably just months, wasn't they, before she died? Just a month or so. And she was still of good spirits. And she, and Faye, she was so grateful for your friendship. You were, you were that friend that was closer than a sister when family couldn't be there. So I know they're all very grateful and I was grateful for all that you did for her too. Many times you drove up day or night if needed be to be with her. So um, many lessons to be learned and to be appreciated. Thank you, Judy. Yes, Eloise and then Sandy. I didn't meet Lee until early 2015, after we'd moved up here. And there were a few times when I got to facilitate Sandy's Sabbath school class, because she wasn't there. I could count on Lee for very pertinent comments. And she loved kittens. So do I. Yes, Lee was, Lee was a good member of the Sabbath school class. She had good, deep thoughts. But I remember some of the things, a couple of the things that Lee did for our family. Um, they had a Bible study group, the ladies did. And at that time, I was taking care of my mom who had um, dementia. So Lee would come every week faithfully and pick up my mom. I still don't know if she did it to help my mom or if she did it to help me, but she knew that I just needed that extra couple of hours when she would take my mom and take her to their Bible study and then bring her back. And that was such a blessing for me. The other thing I remember, this was only about three years ago, and um, we take groups down on mission trips, and I was planning another trip, but 
things just weren't looking quite right and I didn't know if this was what God wanted us to do and I was praying about it and I was actually away from home and praying and praying and I didn't know what to do and I said Lord I just need I just need to know if this is what you want us to do Lee didn't know anything about this she she didn't know anything at all and I got a phone call from Lee two days after I had been praying and she called me and she said Sandy she said, I just had a birthday, and I think this was her 90th birthday. She says, I have $1 for every year that I've celebrated, so I have $90. Do you have any way, do you know, is there any need that you have right now that you could use $90? And I said, oh, Lee, you're an answer to prayer. You have no idea what this means to me because this is God's answer to me that this trip is going to go and we are going to have the funds that we are going to need. It was only $90, which isn't very much for a mission trip, but it was just the seed that I needed. So she has been a blessing to me, and I just want her family to know that she was, she was a big blessing here. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. Yes, Linda. I'm Linda Schaefer, and the Schaefers and the Buds were good friends. Um, when I moved here in 80, I learned all about the history, the Morgans and the Buds and the Schaefers and who lived here and who came there and how many years they'd been here and how many years they'd been there. And so they were friends for a long time, and I thought that was really neat. And I got to know Lee right away and, and Bud, and I really enjoyed them a lot. And concerning missions, oh, I'd say the last, perhaps not last year, but several years before, Lee'd say, why don't you come over and wash my van and I'll give you some money for the mission trip. Thank you, Linda. Anyone else would like to share? I always appreciated Lee helping out in the Sabbath schools. and But the only thing that kind of bugged me, she had a mischievous side and it rubbed off on her daughters and she just couldn't get control of those daughters. And my toes have never been the same. We'll need to get some salve for you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Any other comments. Thank you for sharing stories, what you remember and what lead meant to you. At this time, we'll sing our next song, Trust and Obey. I know this was a favorite song of hers among many. All right, page 590 in your hymnal. Trust and obey. Let's do the first, third, and fifth verses. <clears throat> when we walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but a joy he does richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss. 
Not a friend or a cross, but a friend if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. In a fellowship we, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side on the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, there to their only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. The last time that I saw Lee was when I went out and did a, a communion service. Her and Faye were there and we had just some good sharing together. She always loved the Lord and was never tired of talking about him and what he means to her and, and scripture verses that she appreciated. And she was really thankful that she could have communion. It was not too long before she passed away. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. She claimed that verse. She lived it and saw God leading them in their lives. She prayed for her, her family, prayed together for her family. She looked forward to the time when everyone would be together in heaven. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a light unto my path. A, and a lamp unto my feet. And that's really the message we all need to hear, to put into our lives. And when you think about it, when you're walking in complete darkness, having a flashlight, having some kind of light to show the way is very, very valuable. I remember going into a, a cave and the tour guide Turned the lights out on us. One of those that was wired for electricity. It was turned the light on us. And, and it was so dark, you could not see. If I put my hand up like this, I could not see my hand. And it just reminded me how without light, there's nothing. Your word is a light and a lamp. This world is very dark. It calls truth, error, and error it calls truth. Mixing up light and darkness and trying to convince us that the wrong is right and the right is wrong. Lee knew where her truth came from where her light came from. And that was the word of God. Psalm 118, 14, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. As a pastor, I understand what it's like to be a Christian 
and not have assurance of salvation. I experienced that for a number of years early on in my Christian life. And as a pastor, I've run across many people, including many in the older generation, who hoped they would make it to heaven. Not having an assurance of salvation. Lee was not one of those. She knew Jesus was the source of her salvation. And she found great comfort, great joy in that. In Revelation chapter 14, after the verse that we're very familiar with in relationship to the three angels' messages, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. An experience that I think people who knew Lee would say, that verse fits her. She had patience, and she sought to follow the Lord with all her heart, trusting in him. Verse 13, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. They follow Lee in the influence that she has had in each of our lives in different ways. From helping Bay to stretch her comfort zone to the kids that she taught in Sabbath school, to the Bible study group that she had with her community service. The stories that she told during class or during when, when we had the COVID and we were met in groups separated, sharing, was one of the things that Lee loved to do, something that she had learned, and that she appreciated. Yes, the Spirit says, that they may rest from their labors, and their works follow them. One of her passions was her family. And she prayed, as I mentioned earlier, prayed for you. And she longs for the day when Jesus comes back. She'd love to have everyone there. And the good news is, Jesus does too. And he's made that door wide open because it's his perfect life and death that makes us acceptable, not our righteousness. And when I came to understand that, learn that, found my security in his righteousness, it turned my life around to be able to live the Christian life with peace and with joy, motivated by love. If anyone here has a question or a doubt or feels like they could never measure up, the good news is Jesus knows that. And that doesn't keep him from saying, I want you here. Recently, I shared a sermon here on the Beatitudes. And Jesus ends the, the, the Sermon on the Mount with the idea, if anyone hears my sayings and does them, I will liken him to a person who builds his house upon a rock. 
No matter what storms come, that house will stand. He that hears these sayings and does them. And when you think about the Sermon on the Mount, there's some pretty hard sayings there. Love your enemies. Do good to them who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Do not worry. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. If someone hits you on the cheek, turn the other also. And when you hear those sayings, you think, how do I know if I'm building my house upon the rock? How am I doing with those sayings? Am I, am I living up to that? Well, if that's all we see is those sayings, it could lead to a lot of doubt and questioning. But the key to the whole Sermon on the Mount, the key to the whole plan of salvation, are the first words that came out of Jesus' mouth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Poor. That word poor in the Greek is destitute. You have nothing. Poor in spirit, spiritually bankrupt. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is yours. They haven't done anything. In fact, they've done everything to not deserve it. The kingdom of heaven is yours. How could he say that? Because he understood the gospel. He understand, he understood he was going to the cross for us. That's what he accepted when he was baptized. He accepted his mission to die for the sins of the world and to be their righteousness. It's the incredible good news. Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 19, God was in Christ reconciling the world. That's the same word when God says God so loved the world. That's every person. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. How can that be? It seems unbelievable. No matter who we are, what we've done, God says, I'm not counting your sin against you. You're free to come. And verse 20 is the invitation, be reconciled. That's the message God says, I want you to take and communicate to others, to be my ambassadors, citizens of heaven, my representatives on earth, to share that incredible good news. And if you haven't understood that good news, like I didn't for the first 30 years of my life as a Seventh-day Adventist, if you haven't understood that and you and you aren't walking with Jesus because you don't think you could ever be good enough, please understand now, none of us ever could or ever will be good enough. And he invites us. Live with me forever. Let me be your savior. The kingdom of heaven is yours. Don't throw it away. Let's just sing our final song together. The old rugged cross. Jesus took that cross for each one of us so that we all could be qualified for heaven.
He has written on a piece of paper and given it to you on the top. It says you're titled to heaven. Everyone has been given it. People can tear up the title. I pray that you will hold that title and take it with you to heaven. Hymn yeah. number 159, the old rugged cross. Let's all stand together, those that are able. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dear was best for a world of blood. Sinners were slain. So I'll treasure the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will fade to the old rugged And exchange of some day for love of the crown. For oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a monstrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God, Left his glory above to bear the truth of Calvary. So I'll tell you, sing the song and cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old cross again and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true this shame and reproach gladly bear. Then I'll fail me someday to my home far away, where the glory forever falls in. thank the Heavenly Father that you have been here today to remind us of your love and of your blessing to send us a beloved person to show us the way to walk and follow you. Thank you for the life of Lee that has blessed each one here as a parent as a grandmother, 
as an aunt, as a friend. We appreciate that, Lord, and we thank you for that today. Now she is resting, waiting for that day when Jesus comes through the blue with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and with this call, arise, wake up, the day has come. We thank you for that promise, Lord, that we can hold today, that we will ever be with the Lord because of his love to us and because of the way that Lee showed us that you had taught her to live. Thank you, Lord, for that blessing. And thank you for the promise that one day, very soon, we will see Jesus coming again, and we will see Lee and Lyle and many others again as we join with you in your heavenly home. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.